We're going to uh, continue on uh, the series of teaching this morning, the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for the couple of weeks, we've been talking about instruction, how, how the Holy Spirit has been sent to instruct us, to lead us, to tell us the way. In fact, we have learned that the Holy Spirit is our parent. Is the parent that we have here on the earth, and if we don't yield to him, we live as orphans. And we know that's not good. We don't want that. Praise the Lord. So I'm just going to run through uh, uh, the, the points uh, that we have discussed previously, and then we continue. But I need to let you know that while I was preparing, the Lord wants me to go over humility again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go over it. I'm not going to say the Holy Spirit is not saying the same thing that was said last Sunday. We will just hear more about it. And when God is repeating something like this, it's because of the importance. It's because somebody needs to hear. It's because somebody needs to understand. It's not because they, in fact, my, 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 on my notes, I have all the numbers that is already prepared. But the Lord says, just stay here for now. And I'm going to stay here so that the Holy Spirit can help us. Amen. You know, sometimes we have blind, blind sight in our life. Mm -hmm. You don't even know that it's there. You know, when you are driving and you want to change your lane, and you, you think you have looked, and you think no car is coming, mm -hmm. but really there's a car there because there's a blind spot. God wants to reveal to us our blind spot. You know, because these are the things that hinder. And these are the things that prevent us. And God wants it to be removed in the name of Jesus. Because we know that we don't just come here every Sunday and sit down just to mark a register. We come for a purpose. And the purpose that we come for is so that we can practicalize the word of God in our life. And if there is anything that is preventing us, we want to know it. We want to see it. We want to know how to take it away. So that things will work for us. And it will in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to list down just one, two, three. So number one, we know that the Holy Spirit is not going to lead us outside the word of God. Number two, we need to do away with religion. Number three, we don't want to approach God to force him to speak to us. We want to approach God because we want a relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. And God, God desires that more than we do. Because the reason why he created us is for relationship. So if we do desire relationship and we approach him the way he desires for us to approach him, it will actually happen. Okay, so we want to approach God looking for relationship. And as we establish relationship with him, we begin, he begins to speak. Because you cannot have a relationship with somebody that will not speak to you. In fact, that's the highlight of relationship. The only reason why you know you have a relationship with, with somebody is because there is conversation. And then we develop to understand his voice so that we are safe. Because there are other voices. So when other voices are speaking, you already know the voice of the Lord. Because you are his friend. Number four, we need time. And we have talked about how we need to redeem our time from the time waster. And uh, the minimum that we need to redeem right now is one hour. Every one of us, you need this one hour. And this one hour to do and to practice what we've been teaching. Number five, you need to separate yourself, of course. And you need, number six, you need a place. You need a quiet place where nobody can disturb you. Number seven, do it. Hallelujah. So I'm preaching seven again to people that have not started. Do it. Tell your neighbor, do it. And then number eight, we talk about being in the spirit. Being in the spirit. How you can actually make your spirit to be the leader of your house. Because that is how it's supposed to be. For you to be able to communicate with God, your spirit must lead. Because God is a spirit. And your spirit has to be strong enough to say no to your flesh, to quiet your flesh down, and to make your mind to be quiet. And it's possible. We discuss things that we need to do that will help us. And I just want to believe we're doing that. I want to believe we're watching what we feed our eye gates. 
or to feed your ear gates, you know. And then also you are feeding your spirit. We need to do all these things to help us. Number nine is worship. We've talked a lot about worship and um, I've given us practical means to help us. And I want to believe that everybody is taking advantage of it. And if you still need more help on that, come and talk to me. I, I can still tell you some practical things and give you more, more things that will help you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number 10, praying in the spirit. That one cannot be overemphasized. We have to pray in the spirit. So if you are seated here today and you still do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you should see me after service today. You should. Because why do you want to cheat yourself out of the gift that has been given? You need the, you need to be able to speak in, in, in tongues. Okay, now let's go to number 11, which is where we're going to stay long today. Humility and brokenness. I said a lot last Sunday, but God still wants me to say more. Humility and brokenness. What is humility? Because what the Lord said to me is a lot of my children don't even know what it means to be humble. We have been taught wrongly and we have believed wrongly. And things that we think is humility is, doesn't even have anything to, to do with humility when it comes to God. What is humility? Humility is total submission to the will of God. That is humility. Total submission to the will of God. Total submission to the word of God. Total submission to the spirit of God. And what is the Lord saying? It means that you will lay your own will down. You lay your will and your desire down. And you pick the will of God. That is humility. That is humility. Some of us work in some form of humility, not in total, but total is required of the Lord. God required complete obedience. Complete obedience. And some of us have not even started and we don't even know it. You know, you say that you, you, you are asking for the will of God. You already made up your mind what you want to do. <laughs> you know, people will say they are waiting on the Lord. They are praying. They already have planned what they are going to do. So who are you feeling fully? God knows the state of our heart. Because humility means that only what God says is what you are going to do. And if God doesn't say anything, you keep waiting until he says it. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. You know, because we're talking about intimate relationship with God. We're talking about friendship with the Holy Spirit. We're talking about walking with God here. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Look, it becomes impossible for you to walk with God if you are not in agreement with him. Because one, God is not going to change to agree with you. Write that down. God will not change to agree with you. God stays the same. So the only thing person that can change is you. And when you refuse to change, then it makes it impossible for there to be an agreement. We have to say yes to God all the way. Even in difficult moments. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. Jesus Christ laid a good example for us all. Philippians 2 from 5 said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was the mind that was in Christ Jesus? Who, being in the form of God, thought it no robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him, him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of, a, of men. Why did, did Jesus Christ say, why did he put upon himself the form of a servant? Why was he made in the likeness of men? Why? Is it because he wanted it? He did because the father wanted it. See, that's why a lot of us really don't have understanding. When people stand and start to say, oh, 
God is the, is, the, is the mad God that is always mad at punishing people. Jesus is the God that is of love. Anybody that says that doesn't have a clue because the Father started the work of salvation. Jesus would not have come if the Father did not command him to come. The Father started it all. He issued a command and told Jesus, and Jesus said, yes. Even though Jesus had the right to be equal with God, which none of us even have. None of us have the right to be equal with God as Jesus did. But Jesus decided in spite of that to yield to the will of the Father. But us, as small as we are, <laughs> I mean in sight of God, we argue with him. We stand up against him. We cannot have a relationship with God when we argue with God, when we resist him, and when we stand against him. Because listen to me, when you are not in agreement with God, to him, is you are resisting him. That's the way it is. And we will, we will see it in the word of God. We're going to read that later. Now, let's continue this one. Bible says, being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Did Jesus want to die? He did not. But yet, he was obedient to that death because the Father instructed him to do it. So when God is instructing us to do things, and we have problem doing it, we cannot be his friend. And that is why it seems as if God has favorites. And really, he does. But nobody was born being God's favorite. The only reason why God has favorites is the way those people responded to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So if you respond the same way that the favorite of God responded, you also will become a favorite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is what we are working towards, really. The reason why we are having this teaching is because God wants every one of us to become his favorite. That is the desire of God. And God wants you to himself. God does not want you to come to me to hear his voice. God wants to speak to you directly. And the people, because people cannot develop that kind of relationship with God, they run helter-skelter looking for a word. And most of the time, most of us, we land in the places where we shouldn't even be. We go from fried pan to fire. You think somebody is helping you and giving you a word. By the time you realize you are in fire, it's probably 10 years down the line, and a lot of things have been burnt. But we don't have to expose ourselves like that, because you can hear God. You just need to do it on God's time, because it cannot be done on your time. And we need to understand how important this is because if you know what Lucifer was before the fall, you begin to appreciate what God is telling us today. Because a lot of us, we look at the devil, wicked devil, bad devil, you know, you call him all sorts of names. He was not like that when he was created. He was not like that. He was not created like that. In fact, when he was created, he was the closest being to God. He was the closest to God. The Bible says he walked around among the coals of fire in the throne room of God, freely. Places where angels cannot tread. Lucifer was walking there. But because he got to a point where he stopped agreeing with God. Because the Bible says can two walk together except they be agreed. God cannot change his mind and agree with Lucifer. Somebody has to leave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is why it is just impossible for anybody to go to heaven when you are not born again. You know, some people still find it difficult to accept that because you say, if God really, God is love. <laughs> God is love. How will God cast somebody into hell? That is how. That is how. 
Because God was love before he chased Lucifer out of heaven. You understand what I'm saying? He was love at the time when he chased Lucifer out of heaven. And he's still love right now. And it's because of his love that is revealing unto us what we ought to do. So that we don't go through that route. So, if we want to be a friend of God, we have to be in agreement with God all the time. Whether what he's telling you to do sounds good to your ears or not. Verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. A lot of us will want to be exalted. We come to God with a long list. And you, we shout at him. We shout at him and we tell him, you better do it. And we give him timeline too. That doesn't do anything. God, he does not take God anything to exalt you. When you humble yourself, he will exalt you. And he already displayed this for us as an example in the life of Jesus. The Bible says, we are for. What does it mean? What does that mean? Because of what Jesus Christ did. God didn't just exalt Jesus because, because he just wanted to. Because of what Jesus did, God exalted him. And if there is somebody that is seated here that is seeking out for exaltation, this is the pathway to it. And there is no alternative. Oh, yeah. Humility is the pathway to exaltation. And it becomes almost impossible, <laughs> in fact, for you to be successful in practicing the presence of God when you are not humble. Why waste your time? I mean, you say you are practicing the presence of God, you stay there, God is there, God is instructing you, you are saying no, no, you won't do it. The next time when you go to your place, God will not show up. He won't show up. So that, that's why God wants me to go over this humility again. So that you understand how to approach God. Matthew 26, 39. The Bible says, Jesus Christ went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass over me. So in case you don't know that Jesus really didn't want to die, we see it here. He said, I, I don't want to die. But he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That is humility. Underline that. Underline that in your Bible. That is just humility right there. Not what I want, but what you want. That is humility. Yielding to God at all costs. Yielding to the cause of the kingdom at all cost. Obedience to God at all cost. That is humility. John chapter 5 verse 19. Jesus Christ said this. They then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what is here the Father do, for what thing soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. That doesn't mean Jesus is a robot. Yeah, because some of us will translate this like that and say, well, I mean, he can't do anything anyway. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Whatever Jesus said here is by choice. Yeah. He said, I have chosen to do nothing except what my Father tells me to do. That is humility. Okay, so if you want to humble yourself before God, that's the starting point. And I don't want anybody to be getting afraid here. Because you say, ah, eh, eh, where do I want to start? Don't worry, just be willing. Which one of us can do this? Except by the help of the Spirit of God. Nobody can. But the point is, the spirit cannot work anything out when you, you are not willing. If you don't want to do it, you cannot be forced. 
So the starting point now is yielding yourself. When you go to that place, your secret place, go there and say, okay, God, I humble myself. I'm willing to do anything that you tell me to do. I yield to you. God will start to tell you things. Things that you want to hear and things that you don't want to hear. Period. <laughs> but when you hear things that you don't want to hear, take it and say, okay, God, this thing that you are telling me is difficult for me. Help me. That's all. The Holy Spirit is going to help you. Why, what do you think the supplication in the Garden of Gethsemane was? What was it for? <laughs> Jesus needed help because he didn't want to go to the cross. That was what the supplication was all about. <laughs> Jesus said, you know what? Yeah, I am. This is difficult. I, <laughs> I don't want to do it. That's why angels went to minister to him. God have help for us. Amen. There is help for us. God knows our frame. He knows our weakness. He knows everything. But we cannot now tell God that the only reason why we refuse to humble ourselves is because we are weak. It's not an excuse. God will not take it. Because there's always a fallout to any disobedience, right? We see it in the life of the children of Israel. They had a reason why they didn't want to go and fight the giant. They were afraid. They didn't really, they, it's not like they just wanted to rebel. But that was not a good enough excuse. Because to God, they resisted him. Because God said, give them instruction and they didn't do it. And then also we see it in the life of, of King Saul. When God instructed Saul to go and kill the, the, the Amalek, you know, and destroy everything. And he did it. And he had a reason why he didn't do it. But the reason was not good enough. And that's why Samuel said to obey is better than sacrifice. And we're talking about total obedience right now. Because Saul obeyed some, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, he obeyed more than halfway. Mm -hmm. But the little disobedience nullified all the obedience that he did. So that's one. Two, another thing that demonstrates that we are not humble is when we cannot release our body to God. When you cannot release your body to God, you are not humble. When you have problems in your life, you worry about it, you run out of shelter, you try to find a solution to it by yourself, you are very proud. And God needs to deliver you from it because if you do that, you cannot be a friend of God. 1 Peter chapter 5. I'll read it out from you from the word because a lot of people are staring at me with big eyes. But this is the truth. These are some blind sides that God wants to reveal to us. If you are a warrior, you worry a lot. You are not humble. You are not. 1 Peter 5 from 6 to 7 says... Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And then, what is that sign in front of that? Any English student here? I don't have it in that one that he put there. It's like two dots. Hallelujah. Then he said, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Why? Because that verse 7 is a continuation of what was said in verse 6. How do you demonstrate that you are humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God? By casting all your cares upon him. So if you find it difficult to cast your cares, you are not humble. 
Because then you don't trust him. You don't trust him. You don't believe in the promises that he has given you. How can you call somebody a close friend when you don't trust them? In fact, one of the signs of the, the way you define how close you are to somebody is how much you trust them. And because we all know we have different friends, you know. Some friends, some friends, friends, some friends, 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 friend, friend, based on how much you trust. So now when we want a close relationship with God, we don't trust Him. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Jesus also said this, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why, are, why, why is somebody laboring and heavy laden? Why? Because that person is carrying something that you have refused to put down. That's what Jesus is calling. He said, well, you, this thing that you are carrying, you shouldn't be carrying it. And he said, come unto me. Now look at verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn my ways. Learn. For I am weak and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. You cannot be a burden carrier and say you are humble. You carry your burden on your head. You worry, 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 worry until your pressure is high. You are on medication. You are still worrying. The Bible says when you worry, it does not add a cubit to your height. It does not change anything. It does not help you. The only thing it does is to destroy Verse 30, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my body is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot be yoked to Jesus and still be carrying your body. It's not possible. So if you are still heavy laden and you are still laboring, you are not humble and you are not yoked. Okay, so when you go to and, and you see all these things that God is telling us is, is not to put us down, it's not to make us feel bad, it's to help us, it's to take us to a place of repentance so that we can turn around and start doing things right so that we can start having results. So if you know you are like this, the, the, the Bible says, Know ye not your own self, you know yourself. So all you need to do is when you go to your secret place, you worship, you say, God, look at me. Oh. For what so 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 years, just mention your your year, maybe if you are 54 or you are 40 something. Then, all these years I've been carrying load. Heavy body, I'm tired. God forgive me. Forgive me. I want to drop this load. I want to drop this. Help me. That's the starting point. Help me. God will help you. God, you know, the Holy Spirit is our helper. Do we believe that? He is our helper. But he cannot help us when we don't yield. When he says, put your body down, you say, no, I know what to do. I know, I'll try this. You've tried A, A doesn't work. You, went, you try B, B doesn't work. You do C. C when you get up to tell you are too tired, you don't do anything anymore. You become depressed. And then you wait until you gain enough strength. You, you try D again. You try. But the Holy Spirit has been telling you, drop this button. But I want to believe that after this message, we are all ready to do it. Hallelujah. I mean, why not drop it when you have tried all these things and it didn't work? Isn't it time to just say, okay, let me try God. But that's what we do. We try him at the last last chance. When every breath is gone, you say, okay. Why, why? But God wants us to for it to be the first option for us. God wants to bring us to a place where your first option is you go to God and say, okay, God, this thing, no. Uh, ah, this thing cannot stay like this. But I know before it happened, you were aware of it. I, 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 I put it on your feet. I put it there. Is yours. You know I cannot handle it. 
The only way I can handle this is if you instruct me as to what I need to do. Because sometimes God will instruct you. But if before you hear the instruction, you just let it there and you worship God. God, I know you, you are able to handle this thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, the higher you are, the smaller your problem will belong to you. We, we look like to you. You know, the Bible says we are seated high up there in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus and you look down on your problem, they will be like nothing. But the only reason why our problem looks so big to us is we are not seated there. We should be, but we're not. Because what makes you sit there, what makes it practical for you to be seated there, it starts with the relationship. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus appeared to somebody that gave a testimony and was illustrating to him and told him that worship will help him to be closer to him. And then they entered an elevator and the, the, the man was looking around and said, okay, what flush should I press? Jesus Christ told him, he said, it depends on you. So when you're talking about what flush should I press, I equate that with how much time should I spend, right? We are still talking about one hour, just one hour. That's what we're talking about. But the more time you spend with the Lord, the closer you get to him. Period. And that's how relationships are. The more time you spend with somebody. You know, look, there are some people that when you meet them for the first time, you think that you can never be their friend. There are some people that are married to some people now, that the first time that they met them, they thought that they can, even, they can never be friends to that person, talk less of marriage. But by the time they keep spending time together, and spending time together, and spending time together, then the relationship starts to build. And the more time they spend together, then the more everything just, all the things you were seeing before, you don't see anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the more time we give to God, the closer we get to Him. And the closer we get to Him, the more we get to dwell in His realm. And when we dwell in the realm of God, things that look so big to us, really, doesn't look big anymore. Because all these problems that we see that are big to us, to God, is nothing. The Bible says the whole nation to him is like a drop of water in a bucket. So, he, so we didn't even see my problem. <laughs> you know? And yet, we get overwhelmed by things like that. And we don't want to cast it. We will cast it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we put our body down. We yield to the Holy Spirit. We totally obey God. We totally obey God. And the way you can start is determining in your mind. That's the starting point. If you're still saying, hmm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, then you, you, you won't do it. Even if you go practice the presence of the Lord in your, you are not ready. You are not ready. But when you make up your mind, that is the starting point. Because that means that you're already giving the Holy Spirit something to work on. And He will. Now let's talk about what humility is not. Because God wants to de deliver us from false teaching, from false beliefs. He wants to set us free from deception. Number one, humility is not timidity. Hallelujah. A lot of Christians are timid. And they equate it to humility. Listen to me. When you are timid, you are useless to yourself. You are useless to God. You are useless to the body of Christ. Period. And the sad thing is that there are some denominations that that is how they operate. That is the, their modus of operando. If you go to those places bold, 
By the time you stay there for one year, you are already timid. I'm telling you that because I have experienced it. I never think I could ever be timid in my life. I was. And then when I say I never think I could be timid, I was timid in things, with physical things, but when it comes to the things of God, I was never timid. Never. But he jumped on me. Thank God. God already dealt with it. So if you are here and you've carried timidity to this place, God will deliver you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Being shy is not being humble. Crawling behind the chair so that nobody sees you, that is not humility. That is timidity. And listen to me. Let me give you an example. If you are timid and you are out somewhere and God said, share Jesus with the next person, will you share it? Okay, so is it humility? Because humility is obeying God. So timidity actually prevents you from obedience. Mm -hmm. If you are timid, if you are in a congregation, God gives you a word of prophecy, you will not give it. Some people are so timid that they can't even hold the microphone to sing when somebody else is there. When their pastor is there, they feel comfortable. When they are being visited from one headquarter or the other, they can't sing that day because of timidity. Who are we singing to, mm. to start with? Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if we are singing to God, the same God that was there when nobody is busy, is the same God that stays there when somebody is coming around. God wants to set us free. Shyness is not of God. Timidity is not of God. 2 Timothy 1 7. He says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. And if you read this in some other translation, it says, God has not given us the spirit of timidity, but that of power and love and a sound mind. Some other uh, translation says, that of boldness. Boldness. And then if you go to Joshua chapter 1, after Moses died, and God called Joshua. And God gave Joshua all these good promises. One thing that God kept emphasizing. He said, only be bold. Only. Because if Joshua was timid, even though God had made a pronouncement, he would not be able to fulfill what God said. God told Joshua in, in Joshua 1.5, he said, there shall no not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee, and I will not fail thee nor forsake you. Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous. <laughs> Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. You cannot achieve anything for God when you are in fear. Hallelujah. 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 Go and study about the life of Gideon. You will understand what I'm saying. Gideon was so timid, he was useless. Even though God called him, he was useless. God had to wait for him to be delivered. Go and read from chapter 1. You read until you get to 6 when he was ready. He wasn't ready. With God talking to him, angel appeared to him, it was not enough. Prophet, professor, it was not enough for him. Until he became bold, that was when he was able to blow the trumpet. And even when he gathered his army together, God needed to weed away those that were afraid. Say they wanted to fight. Eh? Fight. I want to be an army of God. And you want to be an army. You are afraid. You cannot go to war. You first of all, we deal with it here. Have you ever seen a, a military person in, 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 in war fronts uh, shaking? And that's why they go through the drill. 
You know, you, you can you just go and say, I want to join the military, and then they will put your name there and send you to war. No. They will put your name there, but you will first of all go through the drill. And only those that pass. And if you know what those people go through, you better not go and enlist if you know that you are not ready. And, and a lot of them is being weeded out. They weed out a lot of them. So if actually things takes that, so you think the thing of the kingdom does not take that. If you want to be anything in the hand of God, you must deal with timidity in your life, shyness, being afraid. You crawl from the back, you crawl from, you, you, you just crawl in everywhere so that nobody sees you. The devil is a liar. The Bible says that the righteous is as bold as a liar. It's the wicked that is fleeing. Why are you fleeing from one place to the other? Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursue it, But the righteous are bold as a lion. So this is one of the things you want to deal with when you come to the presence of God. God, I'm sorry. I'm afraid. I'm timid. I shouldn't. Help me. And begin to, to, to do research on scriptures about boldness. Begin to prophesy it upon yourself. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Cast it out. They are spirit. You need to get to a point in your life where you are fearless. You are not afraid of anything. I'm still working on it. I've dealt with a lot of fears in my life. There are some I'm still dealing with. Most of us, we are afraid of death. That's the spirit. Yes. Go and read Hebrews. The Bible says one of the things that Jesus Christ came to do is to deliver those who throughout their lifetime are subject to bondage of the fear of death. That's one of the things that Jesus Christ came to do. Why are you afraid of death? You say you are going to heaven. So why are you afraid? Why? You understand what I'm saying? Ah. Heaven is my home. Can you come? You sing the song, you, 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 know, you close your eyes and all that. And, but yet you are afraid. So which means you don't believe the word of God. You don't believe it. Even though you say it, you really, if you believe that to be absent in the body is to be with the Lord, why are you afraid? A lot of us, we, we, we say we believe the Bible, but really we are afraid of the future. You, it's like you don't know. Just like the unbelievers. I have overcome that. And trust me, I was under that bondage for a long time because I, be, because I went through an experience in my life because sometimes the enemy like uh, pushes us to some things that happen to us that even break us down further. Because of something that happened to me, that spirit attached to me for years, years, torment, to the point where, uh, uh, and, and it operates in people's life in different degree, okay? Some people know that bad. Some, when, 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 he, when, he, when the devil targets you like that, you will perpetually, because you will even think that you shouldn't even think about death, but you will, you will think about it. I'm telling you, well, a lot of people are going through things. They just don't know how to say, to say it, to talk to people. You know, people can't sleep in the night. But the devil will say, when you sleep, you won't wake up. Yes. Some people cannot travel. Because he says, if you go on the plane, the plane will crash, you will die. <laughs> and it's a lie but these people are in bondage things you just won't be able to function to do what you need to do because of this fear so if you are and you know America have glamorized a lot of things mm. now all those fear they have name they have name agoraphobia hinicophobia damophobia so people will not just be going around and say I, I have I have this one I have that one ah it's demonic bondage. No fear should be in you. As if you want to ever be used of God, you must deal with fear. You cannot be a general and be afraid. 
How, it's not possible. You have to be fearless. You fear nothing. You fear nothing. <laughs> oh, this man of God. <laughs> Lester Summerall. Great man of God. An apostle. He's not here anymore. He's, been, he's gone to be with the Lord. But if you go read his autobiography, you will understand what I'm saying. You need to read it because it will change your life forever. This man, when he goes to nations, you know, because he does a evangelical work. So when he arrives at a new place to do his work, he will ask them, okay, what is the God that they worship most in that place? They will tell him. So we say, take me to the temple. Okay, so they will take him to the temple of that God. And then he will say, is there any food that you have forgiven this God? I'm telling you, you know all those things they prepare and put at the feet of, he said, I'm hungry. Give it to me, I want to eat. They say, hey, ah, if you eat it, if you give it, he said, no, don't worry, give it to me. In front of everybody, you eat it. Then he will now say, I'm sleeping here to, tonight. <laughs> he will sleep there. So, of course, people already say, ah, this one is not going to wake up. The following one, he will not wake up. So, when the day breaks, they will be peeping. And then he will come out. That's how he wins those places for Jesus. You know, they say, eh? Huh? There is somebody that is more powerful than our God, and they want to start worshipping him. He said, mm -mm, don't worship me. Jesus. Hallelujah. That is, how, how can you be afraid and do that? Some of us, we have not even done it yet. Where, when you, 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 that's why we pray all this manner of prayer that doesn't even make sense. Because of fear. Okay, what's up? what about somebody that now went into their thing, ate the elbow, yeah? <laughs> ate everything, and slept there? Which, for those that don't understand Yoruba, Ebo means. The, 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 sacrifice. the sacrifice, you know, the sacrifice they put before the God. You know, we need to know our God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Bible says, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. So, humility is not timidity. In fact, both of them are two opposite things. Because this man I'm talking to you about is one of the humblest men that I've ever lived on there. Because anything that God tells him to do, he does it. Hallelujah. He does it. And he doesn't even wait. You know, some of us, when God says it, you say, hey, I want confirmation. <laughs> and then you pray for one year. One year passed, you are still wanting confirmation. You pray for the second year. You pray, 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 pray. But this guy, when God says it, immediately he does it. Immediately. And those are the kind of people that God is looking for. Those that we obey him and do it promptly. Quick to obey. Quick to repent. Quick to forgive. Those are the friends of God. So if you want to be the friends of God, that's, that's what God is wanting from us. Okay, number two. What humility is not. Humility is not bowing down to men. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. You just bow everywhere you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma. Yes, sir. It's not humility. In fact, I get so weary sometimes. Somebody will tell me a sentence. And in the midst of the sentence, there is like five mass. I'm like, okay, please. Please. What, what's the problem? And I don't blame them. Is because they have stayed too long in some environment also. But if you are like that, God wants to deliver you today. I'm not saying don't respect your elders. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, we need to respect one another. Even if you are my age, I should respect you and you should respect me. But when with all the ma, 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 and sa, 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 there's no respect. When the person is not before you, you say nonsense about them. You say horrible thing. You say terrible thing. And then when you see them, you are doing sa 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 sa. One hundred and one million times. Give me a break. That is not humility. And then you say, ah, oh, he's a very humble brother. Mm -hmm. 
Really? 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 Men may say that God knows. God knows. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 25. The fear of a man bringeth a sneer. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. When you are afraid of men, you are putting a snare upon yourself. You are putting yourself in bondage. You are restraining, restricting yourself. You are turning away from God and serving man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is the conclusion? Fear God and keep his commandment. Fear God and obey him. For this is the whole duty of a man. And trust me, if you fear God, you will respect your fellow human being. Period. If you fear God, you will love him. You will love your neighbor as yourself. You will respect even those that are your age mates. Probably, of course, your elders, you will respect them because you have the spirit of God in you and you are submitted to God. So, please, let, let's, let's just... Come on, quit all these things. And we know that even Jesus Christ in his day, in his day did not tolerate it. Do we know people that were like that in the Bible? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes. They were doing all those things perfectly and yet their hearts were so far away from God. Jesus did not try to conform because what happens is when you go to places like that, they beat you into conformation. They beat you hard. <laughs> but the point is, what are you doing there? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I always tell people, I don't care how good you are before you get there. You will be converted. I have experienced it. I'm talking from experience. When my life began to morph, I was morphing to what I was not. And not only was I noticing it, the Spirit of God was speaking to me. Started to have the same dream over and over and over and over and over again. I'm like, what is the meaning of this dream? And long, it took me a long time before I could even interpret it. Before I could interpret it, I was already away from the place. I said, ah, this is what God has been trying to tell me. I will go somewhere, I will lose my, my purse, my bag. I will just, and it's, it will happen in such, the dream will be different, but the, everything will just show the same thing. I was losing my identity. That was what God told me. You are losing your identity. And I didn't know it. And a lot of us, we have lost our identity because of places where we have situated ourselves. Jesus resisted the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes so much because he needed to protect himself. Have you ever thought about it? Why is he always like fighting with them everywhere where he sees them? Why didn't he just leave them alone? He needed to protect himself because if he did not, they would change his identity. That's how forceful those people are. That's how forceful because they are not working by themselves only. They are being helped. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Knowingly or unknowingly, they are being helped. Don't submit yourself to a man that is not submissive to the Holy Spirit to the word of God or to Jesus. Don't submit yourself to a religious organization that is not submitted to the Holy Spirit, to the word of God, and to God. First Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11.1 Paul said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Amen. Listen to me. It's better to walk alone. That's one thing I've learned. Don't say, ah, I don't want to be by myself. You are better off by, to be with God and the Holy Spirit and with Jesus. You're better off. Be 
Because when you pitch yourself with the enemy of God, you are resisting God. You can't be a friend of God. You cannot. Majority does not carry the vote in the kingdom of God. Bridge. What carries the vote is the will of God. Whatever the Father wants perpetually carries the vote. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter ye at the straight gate. What does it mean to be straight? Little. Tight. Tight. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in their heart. So the crowd is not it. But in America today, we believe the crowd is it. You go to a place, and they are not even, there are few. Mm. Mm. I want, you know, lot of people, lot, lot, lot. I'm not saying there can't be lots of people doing the right thing. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying right now. But the point is, when you find yourself in a place where the will of God is not being done, the word of God is not being followed, the principle of God is not being held high, the spirit of God is not given right of the way, and yet you say you are there to serve God. Okay, now which God are you serving? Which God? Because that's the question. Because when the Israelites made the golden calf mm. and they lifted it up and the Bible says they made a feast mm -hmm. and they danced mm -hmm. and they, they were so happy, what did they do? They said, behold our God mm -hmm. that took us from Egypt and brought us here. Which God are they talking about? That was not Jehovah. And you know, I have grown to a point in my life right now that I just call a spade a spade. Before, I used to explain a lot of things out. Jesus Christ said, a bad tree cannot give out good fruits. Word. Word. And a good tree cannot bring out bad fruit. Word. Period. Because when Jesus was talking about the end of the age, and he said a lot of people will be deceived. Be careful. And the, the, the disciples said, okay, what, what should we do so that we, we will not be deceived? And he said to them, a good tree. Just, just make that your principle. Make that your principle. I don't care whether you are spitting fire <coughs> or, or, or hailstone, you know. But let me see your fruits. If it is good, hallelujah. <coughs> because the spirit is one. If your fruits are bad, then it does not line up with the word of God. It does not line up with the word of God. Number three, being pious does not mean humility. Pious. We know what pious is, right? Hypocritical display of devotion and reverence. Hypocritical. You know? You're always saying the right thing. <laughs> always trying to do the right thing. But it's all hypocritical. Matthew 23, 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchre, mm -hmm. which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. And God has shown that to me before, too, in a dream. In a dream, I saw um, the monarch. <laughs> you know, the monarch in, in England, you know, they dressed in their regalia, you know. And they were all lying down. In the dream, they were lying down. And I began to admire them. Oh my God, look, they're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And then the Holy Spirit took me close to them and I touched them. They were cold. Cold. I mean, when I say cold, like ice cold. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> you can't judge anything by the appearance. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. That's why you need to walk in the spirit. Okay, so uh -huh. God is the one that knows the heart. Okay, so all those hypocrisy does not help you when you come to the presence of God. Because when you practice the presence of God, you want to meet with him. And one thing is that God deals with us according to our thoughts, in fact. Let me tell you how you are recognized in heaven. 
This is the way you are recognized in heaven. Your thoughts, your word, and your acting upon the word of God. Yes. That's how you are recognized. What you are thinking about, what you say, because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And I'm not saying what you are saying when you are pretending. Okay, because God is there all the time. Because when you say something in church and you are out there singing, God is there also. God is everywhere. Praise the Lord. Okay, so all these things we need to repent of, period. We need to repent. We need to turn around. We need to allow God to take these things away and help us. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9. This is a story of a man called Simon. Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says that Simon bewitched everybody in this city because he had power. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Power in quotes. Everybody is looking for power. He will do some signs and wonders. So everybody in the city, they, 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 they flock around him and they call him a man of God. But he was not a man of God. He was being used by the devil until Philip showed up. The Bible says when Philip got there and he preached about the gospel, a lot of people gave their lives to Christ. Why? Because they saw real signs and wonders. But what happened? Simon also gave his life to Christ. Okay? So he became a believer too and he started to follow them. You're going to read all this at home. I don't, I I don't have time to read it. So Acts chapter 8 from verse 9. Just read it down to 19. Okay? But let's see what happened here. The Bible says from 14 and from 17 that the apostles, Peter and John, were sent to these believers to lay hand on them so that they can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then lay their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power that... I, that on whoever I lay hand on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so this Simon, which is supposed to be born again, really his heart is still not right with God. He is still following them because of selfish ambition. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so when we have selfish ambition like this, we cannot be a friend of God. The only vision we can have is the vision that is given to us by God. Any other vision that we generated by ourselves, which is called ambition, is against God. Simon wanted this. Now, let, let, let's listen to what Peter said to him. Verse 20. Once I finish this, I will stop and then we'll continue next Sunday. But let's just finish this day. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast, thou hast thought that the gifts of God may be purchased with money. But you know, listen to me. It's not only money that anybody can use. It could be sucking up. It could be manipulation. It could be fighting. It could be strife. It could be causing confusion. Just because you want something. You want a position. You want this. You want that. Because of your own selfish end. Because of your desire. You want something. Simon the sorcerer wanted something. And he was ready to do anything to get it. Including giving money. But Peter said in verse 21. Thou hast neither power. Underline this. Because this is very strong. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thoughts of thy heart may be forgiven thee. Mm. If we have a heart like that, God said, you will not have any part. You will not have okay. any part in the things that pertain to the kingdom. Mm. You will not. And a lot of people that have gained title that way, they are not serving God. God didn't call them. God didn't appoint them. God didn't anoint them. And that's why there's a lot of commotion in the church. 
Because you see all these people with titles that were never ordained by God, that was never called of God. Of course, they got it because they did everything to get it. This is not humility. But the people that do this kind of manipulation to get there, they will tell you they are humble. Okay? Because they will suck up to anything to, to get it. <laughs> so you say, ah, this person is so humble, but they know what they are after. But the difference is God sees the heart. God sees the intention of your heart. So when you present something out, but inside your heart, you know why you are doing it. God knows also. And those kind of people, what God does, he resists them. He resists them. We don't want to be there. So let's just humble ourselves before God. If we have practiced this before, if we do it, let's repent. Because this hinders us in the place of prayer. In the place where we want to practice the presence of God, to be close to God, to be the friend of God. You know, God, God Peter said, he said, you have no portion, no portion. And that's the way God sees it. God forbid that we will not have a portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So we just need to turn around. So the, the, the question is, why are you doing what you are doing? Let's ask ourselves. You don't need to answer me. You answer when you go before God in your own secret place. Why are you doing what you are doing? What are you after? Because God sees it. And, and we should just be honest with God. So if, if, we, if we present ourselves like this person, then repent and say, God, just forgive me. Purify my heart. Help me. Cleanse me. I desire you and you only because God is the one that we should desire. And we should yield to God. We should submit to him. Yield to the word of God. Yield to the purpose of God. And forget about all these other things. God already has something written about you in the volume of his books. Everybody has something written about you. And when you become the friend of God, God will reveal it to you. And whatever God has written about you is the best. It is the best in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stop here today and then we'll just continue next Sunday. Let's stand on our feet.